Germany was the pioneer of various technological and military advances during World War II. One of the most unique, innovative, and deadly of Hitler's secret weapons was the V-2 rocket. The Vergeltungswaffe 2, or Retribution Weapon 2, was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. During the war, there was no effective defenses against it. There was nothing that could be done to stop a V-2 rocket from reaching its objective. When the Third Reich collapsed, the Allies rushed to capture the German facilities and launch sites that housed V-2s and other technologies. Many German scientists were sent to the U.S. and USSR to continue developing new weapons. At the height of the Cold War, with both countries in conflict and threatening each other with the possibility of a nuclear conflict, the U.S. began working on advanced defense systems that could neutralize an enemy warhead in flight. The Sprint missile was one of those defensive weapons. An anti-ballistic missile that could intercept objectives that had descended below an altitude of 37 miles, the Sprint was so fast that it glowed white as it flew. It was able to reach speeds of Mach 10 in just 15 seconds. In the later stages of World War II, the U.S. Army began studying the possibilities of shooting down a V-2 rocket. In 1955, Bell Labs was tasked with developing a surface-to-air missile. The result was the Nike Hercules, an anti-ballistic missile capable of handling the job, if it could find its target. At the time, the Army lacked advanced radars and computers with enough speed to detect warheads and develop their tracks to take them down. The Nike Zeus system, an improvement over the Hercules, was born to do just that. It proved successful at intercepting test warheads, but it was only capable of tracking single targets. In 1958, scientists from the recently created Advanced Research Projects Agency by President Eisenhower found that the radiation generated from a nuclear explosion blocked radar signals above 37 miles of altitude. If a Soviet missile exploded near a radar site or used radar reflectors, it would be rendered useless. However, ARPA proposed a solution that became an essential part of the Nike X system. ARPA noted that near the lower atmosphere, the radar decoys and the radiation area of effect were almost entirely mitigated. Below 37 miles of altitude, the enemy warheads were again easily detected by the radars. Once the missiles descended below that altitude, it was the perfect moment to strike and neutralize the threat. The missile required to hit those targets had to be fast, very fast. An encounter would last seconds. The average enemy warhead would be moving at more than four miles per second. To reach its target in time, the Sprint was capable of hitting Mach 10 in less than 15 seconds. The Nike X system was equipped with a new radar system and computers that could track hundreds of objects at once and control salvos of many Sprints. Dozens of warheads would need to arrive at the same time to overwhelm the system. The Sprint was of conical shape, powered by a two-stage solid propellant rocket motor. Once the missile had been ejected from its silo by a cold gas generator, the engine was ignited. The Sprint accelerated so fast that the cover of the silo had to be blown off by explosives. Just two seconds after leaving the silo, the first stage ignited, producing more than 650,000 pounds of thrust. During this phase, the Sprint steered itself using fluid injection. It was so powerful that upon separation, the first stage disintegrated. In less than 15 seconds, the Sprint could travel more than 17 miles. Moving at such speeds, surface temperatures on the Sprint reached 6200 degrees Fahrenheit. This caused plasma to form around the head of the missile, making it gleam white as it flew toward its target. An ablative shield was incorporated into the nose and the missile's body to ensure that the extreme thermodynamic heating did not burn the interceptor or affect the radio commands from the control center. Phased array radars and high-speed computers allowed the warhead to be tracked, while also calculating steering commands uplinked to the missile via radio connection. When the Sprint was close to a target during its final phase, below the 37 miles of altitude, a W-66 nuclear warhead would be ignited. This would generate a neutron flux that disabled the fissile core of the enemy missile and neutralized the threat. The first Sprint launch was in November 1965. After more than 50 experimental tests, the Sprint was cancelled in 1973, 
when arms limitation negotiations for the USSR permitted each country to maintain one ABM site with 100 warheads. The Sprint remained in service until October 1975, when the US Congress decided to deactivate an ABM site in North Dakota. This ended the country's effort to establish a well-rounded ABM system. The Sprint II, a prototype with an improved speed and guidance system, was scrapped and never saw testing. Two Sprint missiles can be appreciated today, one at the Air Defense Artillery Museum in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, the other at the White Sands Missile Range Museum in Alamogordo, New Mexico.